Good morning, folks. We've got a comet to introduce, weather alerts, a brand new weekly segment to these morning news programs, and we put our electric theory hats on for a bit as well. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. Primary feature is indeed the dark incoming coronal hole, which has reached center longitudes this morning. Bright spot to the left, incoming umbral magnetic fields associated with a few sunspots. While solar flaring is still flatlined in A range, we now have visibility of the spots crested over the eastern limb into view. Solar wind is up and down, but not to extremes, and the back and forth is wholly within normal range, leaving Earth's magnetic field in calm condition this morning. With that coronal hole facing Earth, we've got another day or two of elevated seismic risk, and then we expect to impact to Earth's magnetic field from the intensified solar wind stream Sunday night or Monday. We begin top stories with the need for thinking outside the box, or the article, whichever you prefer. So this is a mainstream black hole article, and furthermore, a phenomenon they say is part of the black hole merger gravitational waves recoil effect process. What I'm looking for in the electrical thinking realm is if we normally find these supermassive objects at active centers in the cosmos, like center of galaxies, what are we actually looking at when they go rogue and decide to run away? Would love to see your comments. Up next, allow me to introduce 46P Wurtnin. This comet is much like the thousands of other Jovian cometary bodies, and it just so happens the next pass of the object should be just at Earth's night side, only about 30 lunar distances away. There is no chance for impact to Earth, and the comet nucleus is only about a kilometer across, but there could be a major coma brightening. It is very much like 67P, and in fact was Rosetta's original target. When it sneaks in behind the Earth in December 2018, it will also be crossing the equatorial plane. Could be amazing opportunity to watch electrical comet activity. Up next, hail was another problem in the U.S. yesterday. You'll remember it was just last week we reported the damage to the Kansas wheat crops, and today we begin a long journey tracking a major canary in the coal mine, the food. Much of it will stem from solar effects on the jet stream, polar vortex, and atmospheric patterns like the North Atlantic Oscillation, positions of the Hadley cells, etc. As the sun marches into grand minimum, we are already beginning to see the effects of these upper-level changes on the troposphere and food growing ability below. We'll peek in and update the situations around the world as time begins to run out on the paradigm of the last century. This is Food Watch. So it's not just the United States feeling the hail across the pond. It's mixed with record cold temperatures for this time of year. And it's not just the vineyards feeling it either. Apples and other stone fruit strongly affected. Turkish strawberry yields are expected to take a big hit. And in Poland, the cherries don't appreciate Gaia's attitude one bit right now. But the opposite problem exists in Somaliland. Imagine you broke free from the strife-torn Somalia found a bit of peace to the north, and all of a sudden the rain stops for two years. The intertropical convergence zone and jet stream changes are going to do this to India over the coming years, but for now, there is a new reason to fight in eastern Africa. The losses are insurmountable for most, and I don't know what it takes for a camel to lack the strength to stand, but it can't be good. Top weather worry tonight returns to the United States as New Zealand finally relinquishes that top spot with its storms leaving. Major severe threats tonight in the southeast. In just three days, registration will open for observing the frontier 2018. And FYI, we've had more emails about VIP spots than we have VIP spots to give away. So, paga atención, por favor, mis amigos. We've got public appearances upcoming the next few months. Wind maps and temperature scales up through the atmosphere and shots of our star to close. Orale, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.